Hey, hello, welcome creatives to Cat's Creations where tonight, uh, or today, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make a spring mailbox swag. I was out walking to my mailbox today and every day I pull into my driveway and every day I walk out to check the mail, I'm like, hmm, it's time for that winter mailbox swag to go. So I went through and organized some of my craft supplies today and was able to find the essentials I needed to put together what I think will be a really amazing spring mailbox swag. So I can't wait to teach you how to do it and to show you how simple it is. Um, and then I'll take pictures of it much later when I swap the two out and show you how, um, how incredible it all looks and how that can definitely um, perk up your neighborhood if you happen to have uh, mailboxes. So if you guys are joining me for the first time, I'd like to say welcome. Just readjusting our heater. Um, it's a little warmer today, so I'm looking forward to the spring, but um, we're supposed to get inundated with rain for about the next 10 days. So um, it'll be a hit and miss kind of thing. So hi, Mary. How are you? Um, so if you're first time uh, finding us on the page today, um, let me know how you kind of happened across this. Was this like you found me on YouTube and then uh, mapped over? Did this just pop up in your Facebook feed? It's always interesting to find out how new people find um, us for the very first time. So I'd like to also welcome you. And if you can let us know where you're from, a lot of times crafty connections are made here on Facebook Lives. If you are not currently liking or following my page, I would appreciate it if you guys have the opportunity to do that. That way you're notified whenever we go live. And let's go ahead and get started. Hi, Gail. How are you? So I'm going to pan you guys down. So I'll go over the materials and then we'll start putting it together. So hang with me one moment. We're going to pan you down. And I think we're just about there. I'll give you guys just a little bit more of a view. All right, so now your overhead. It's like you're directly opposite from me. What we are using today is this is leftover garland from um, Christmas time. So this is from Hobby Lobby. I love Hobby Lobbies because their garland is not stiff, like some garland is stiff. And then this makes for a perfect base for a mailbox swag. So if you could imagine this laid out straight when we get ready to um, affix this to our mailbox swag, it is going to um, bend in a U shape like this up and over our mailbox. And then everything that we add to it is going to be across the top and over the sides. So the first thing we want to do, and this is 36 inches by the way, is we want to separate all of the um, stems that are on the evergreen because this is going to create for us a base to hold everything in place and um, it always looks so much better and so much more full when you open everything up so really get your hands in there make sure that you're feeling around on the back side a lot of times those back pieces get missed and so they lay flat and you can already see there's the difference between before and after fluffing. So we're gonna to continue to do that all the way down. Now, I get asked the question all the time, well, how, how viable is a mailbox swag? Well, it depends on what your weather's like. Uh, is it in direct sunlight? You know, are, are you on a shadier, side of the street where maybe you don't get as much sunlight. Um, we're on a pretty tree lined um, street so we have real tall pines on either side but I have had my mailbox swag out there for uh, just before Christmas. That was my Christmas swag that I put out there and everything has managed to last with the exception of anything that was um, probably spray painted on with glitter that kind of just all with the rain and the snow that we've had here. I mean, we've had rain, snow, high winds, sun, you name it. We've had just about a little bit of everything. And, um, the mailbox flag for the most part looks amazing. I would easily be able to re reuse it next year. I would just replace some of the, um, 
uh, styrofoam picks that have lost, like if it was a peppermint shaped candy, it just went white instead of the red and white swirl. So they last really well. And I haven't had to go out and fluff it. I haven't had to go out and do anything else. I just leave it. I glance at it as I drive by. And like I said, I was like, oh, wow. We really need to get out there. Because we have a lot of our neighbors that walk the streets. Um, even though our house isn't visible from the street, it's always nice to have something pretty for people to look at on their walk. So this is what we're doing. So... 36 inches spread out completely on my um, cutting mat. This is our base that we are going to work off of. And we're going to start right now by laying in the deco mesh. Let me go ahead and get your comments pulled up so I can read. This is the one girl show today. So let me make sure I can see you. Hi, Darlene. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Marilyn. Hi, Pam. Hi, Audrey. Hi, Yvonne. Hi, Joyce. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So, you guys know what a fan I am of the metallic um, lime green and white plaid mesh. This is from Craft Outlet. I have cut these to 15 inch pieces and I have 12 of them. So I'm going to line my evergreen form in a ruffle pattern for these. And I'm going to start right here on the very, very end, the very tip. I'm going to kind of go up one. And as you can see, I'm just utilizing the little evergreen stems and twisting my deco mesh on. So I'm going to put one on each end. That'll be my starts. And we don't have to be super perfect on these. They were cut with a wood burning tool. So that kind of will help keep that mesh from doing anything crazy. Most of the time, the cut edges are going to the inside, finished edges are to the outside. And now we are going to, oops, pulling those out, they're sticking to each other. We're gonna go ahead and continue to cover up the evergreen. So, you're going to see me periodically from time to time lay these sideways, lengthways, wideways. It's okay to have the evergreen on there for just a little pop of the dark green, but honestly, I really don't want to see it. So we're just using it as like a work, like a uh, work frame, just something to hold our mesh. And this one's going to be predominantly just for spring. I thought about doing Easter one and I was like, why? I'm just going to have to take it down. Let's just make one for spring. And then um, it can serve spring slash Easter. So we shall see. And I'm doing these a little bit thicker. Most of the time I just do 10 inch pieces. So this one we're doing with 15 inch pieces so I'm hoping to get them to ruffle a bit more and I'm really trying to get them to focus just to the outside so like here my focus is bring them to this side and it always looks so much different here than when we actually put it on the mailbox because here you might look at it and go hmm I'm not loving that but then you put it on the mailbox you're like okay I see it now so I've got one two three four five six pieces I'm gonna save that one for the last because that's my last last piece like the piece that came off the roll I had just enough to do this I'm gonna flip it to the other side so see now we have this whole side we're working and I'm going to focus these in between the other ones so wherever there's a break like a break break I'm going to come in and place one of those
So again, this is 10 inch deco mesh cut to 15 inch pieces. Placing these on both sides and on the ends. We don't want that one. We just want the side. And we're going to do this one right in between, right here. Because I thought that this metallic lime green would make for a really soft uh, look paired with a darker, you know, green. It might um, give it some real nice contrast. And I'm not worried about the individual little pieces of evergreen that are popping through. That's like not where I'm really concerned. Three more pieces and then our base is complete. You can see how I'm starting to get to the ends of my mesh pieces. Just like so, right in here. And trust me, by the time we're done, you won't see the dark. You'll only see the light. Okay, right on in here. Right now you only see it because that's where I'm securing it to. And our last one's going to go right in here. Since this is the tightest of them all. Right on in. Okay. So there is our deco mesh base. So that's all set there. Okay. Now what you need to do is find out where the middle is. Easiest way to do that is just kind of grab both ends, give it a pull, and usually right at the center. So right here where I have my hand, right in here, is going to be our center. This is where our bow is going to go, so that if you look at it here, these outside pieces are going to go this way on the mailbox. Okay, you're not seeing this on the front. It's kind of looking like this, so we're going to have a bunch of different things here. But in order for us to have a showpiece bow, you need to like kind of place that at the top of your mailbox. That helps you center positioning on your mailbox. So we're going to build a bow. And I have five different colored ribbons. We're not going to go too big because this is just for the top of the mailbox rid of all this is just going to be an ongoing thing but at least for now I can get rid of some of this okay and it's still going to be static fud there we go all right so we're going to cut that sharder end off this is going to be my bottom bow, the two and a half inch. Everything else is an inch and a half. Still there. Um, we're going to dovetail the end first. Still there. There we go. Dovetail end just means bring wire edges together. We're going to cut from the fold down to that wired point. That's kind of a weird point. So let's see if we can improve on that point which we did, and from here, we're gonna kinda eyeball how far do we want this really to fall into our um, design. So remember, this is our largest, so we're gonna go, it says 10 inches. So I'm using the Bodabra, just to kinda help me hold things, put them in order. 
I don't really have a rhyme or reason. There's no formula or recipe for this one. We are going to go with five inch loops. Because like I said, this is our on top of the mailbox centerpiece, basically. That is five and a half. Let's go 5.25. So five and a quarter. Oops. There's that. Make sure this one is five and a quarter. And then we're taking this back out 10 inches. Dovetail that end again. So I have a nice finished look. Even my ribbon outside has not faded. It has not frayed. So it has stood the test of time really well, which is surprising. This was my test for this particular design. Now I'm going to come in with this butterfly. It's butterfly on green, inch and a half. This is from Burton and Burton. I've had this one for a while. And we're going to go nine and a half inches for this. And I'm going to do a solid five inches for my loop. So I just kind of guess about where five inches should fall. And then I'm just going to use like an even like on the 20. If I stretch this out, it should end right on the 15, which it does. That bend over. Kind of eyeball it again, but double check just to make sure. And then back out nine inches and dovetail again, just like so. Boom, I want to make sure. Joyce says, do you ever use ferrous silk ribbon? Actually, I do. Not very often. I think I actually have some coming that I just ordered. And I do have some at Christmas time. So, and the sad thing is, is I haven't used it yet. It's crazy. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and come in here with this peach. And then we're going to do our green and white stripe. The peach is from Craft Outlet. And we're going to do this with nine inch tail. Right here. We're going to pinch it. Place that on the inside. Up and over. Because a lot of our florals are just different shades of peach. Um, it's so hard to settle on like, do you want to do pink? Do you want to do peach? So this is four and a half inches for my loop size. So we're just going to guesstimate this one. Four and a half inches. Right there. And then back out. Eight inches. Linda's like, I always love your choice of ribbon and colors. I am, well, I spend probably about 25, 30 minutes picking out my ribbon. You should see the stack that I start with and then I start narrowing it down and then I pull flowers and then I look at the ribbon and I'm like, oh, those flowers just don't match the ribbon I picked. So then I'm like, do am I really set on the flowers or am I really set on the ribbon? And then I just make those changes. So I was pretty set on the florals because um, I haven't unpacked all of my florals yet. This inch and a half green and white striped is from Sam's. And this was from Sam's last year. I don't know if they have the same color for spring this year. And we're going to do eight and a half inches from my tail length in. And then we're going to do a four inch loop which should be just a half inch smaller then and we're right there on the floor do the same up and over back out to the 20 right on the floor 
and back out. Dovetail cut. And it's hard sometimes to not go overly crazy. Like I had three different color, four different color, um, peach and pink florals before I really settled on this one um, because we're using some peonies in our florals. So I kind of thought this one tied it all together. This is from Craft Outlet. And sometimes if you're really in love with your ribbon selections, you might want to pick up your 50 yard spools, which is what I did here. Just because this is such a nice neutral palette, um, it really gives you the option to, you know, pair it with sage or do it with cotton or pink or peach. Um, and we're doing three and a half inch loops on this one. Just double checking and then just straight out again, trying to find the eggs. There we go. Trying not to burn myself on the skillet because it's heating all of our glue while we wait. Um, let's get a nice pink a pale pink and this is going to be our bow so when I place the bow on top of this it's gonna look a little different I didn't even do my my U like I normally do um, so should prep your pipe cleaner first you're gonna hold from the bottom and twist so I have limited hand strength so I do whatever is easy and that's what's easy right now so in here remember this is our center so I'm gonna go right down to the center and I'm gonna go ahead and secure my pipe cleaner I'm going to push my ribbon down to where I need it to go okay and then we are going to pull your ribbon. So I'm going to pull the tails down first. Oh, I didn't dovetail that one. There's that. There's that. Pull, pull. Here's this one. Okay. Now, when they fluff, I'm going to grab the bottom two. So we're doing the tulip and this one and pulling. And then here I'm gonna go opposite, one up, one down. So we have a representation of both colors. Same thing here. I'm gonna take the green up and the peach down. And then over here, we're gonna do the opposite, just like so. And then we're gonna go and fan this out so that when this sits on our mailbox as it goes like so this is the bow that you're going to see on the mailbox and then all the tag all the tails are going to swag over the top of the mailbox on the top so there's that one so we will end up re-fluffing that once we get it out but that is how it is being staged. And so now what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna build our entire floral base with what we can see. Now you have to keep in mind something really quick. When you bend this right in here, okay, the bow's gonna stay on top of the mailbox, but you have these areas underneath the bow. So when it swags up and over the mailbox, we need to make sure that something is filling here. When we're building it, flat you don't necessarily see this as much so we have a tendency of overlooking this but you got to remember it's we're kind of laying it flat even though it's going to be a three-dimensional you know arch like so but that's kind of 
if you can imagine it like that. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I have two of these really gorgeous peonies, which are what is in my bow. So one's a little bit peachier. This one's got a little bit of a pink tinge to it. Um, we want to make sure all the greenery is intact. And we don't need stems quite that long. I'm cutting mine down about two inches. And then we are going to, I have my glue skillet. I think you guys can see it. If I put it on top of the mat, you'll miss it. But it's just right here. So I'm gonna dip it in my glue. And this is what is going in this filler space right here. So we have those nice peonies. Okay, so we're doing one here. We're gonna place one on the opposite side. Right in that same spot. The area just underneath our bows. Okay, so there's our peonies. Just like there. And then we are going to add in um, so those are my biggest flowers. Then as I progress down to the bottom, I'm going to go like a middle or medium sized floral and then um, a little bit um, smaller as we get towards the bottom. We might even come back in and add some ribbon tails if we feel that it needs that. I'm hoping that we can just get by with all florals. That's my vision is all florals. So let's see what we can do. Let's take, looking at a couple, to see which ones I like better. I have some daisies and some lilies on here, and I'm liking that color palette. Like, I really want to self, I really want to pull this one apart, and then I have some really deep, um, dark ranunculus, but I'm thinking more along the lines of the peach or the peachy yellow ones that we might pull off of here. So let's dissect this one first. So let's go ahead and pull. We're gonna push all our greenery up because that's gonna help camouflage more of our base. So there's one on the other. I think there's four of them on here, which would be nice. Again, two inches down, push your greenery up. If you're not sure what you like, just go ahead and start. Now remember, right now it feels squishied, but remember, it's gonna get fanned out. So where it appears to be squishy now, it's gonna get fanned out as we lay it in our arch. So I think I'm gonna put, this one's a little too long. I think I'm gonna do one here, and I'm gonna put another one on the other side, right in here, so that you have one that's gonna kind of face the back a little bit. Let me grab these. And this particular uh, bundle is from Hobby Lobby. And right now, this week through the 11th, and no, I don't get paid by Hobby Lobby to sponsor this content. Um, florals are 50% off, so this bunch when I bought it, it was normally $12.99, but as you can see, I'm getting a lot from it. That means it's $6.50. And so I really want to see a lot of florals in this. So there's those two, and then we have these things that are really pretty. I like them. They're very wispy. Let's make sure we have everything kind of pulled up. These are like, I guess it's supposed to be like a dandelion, but it's weird. But I like the wispy. So I'm gonna pull those off. I have two of those. Um, I have these. Gotta make sure I have both sides of the greenery up. 
There's that one. We have some hydrangeas. Again, all the, let me get it this way. I'm just separating and pulling everything up. So here's our hydrangeas. That one just kind of popped all the way off. So let's push it back down. I love the creamy green white color. There's that. And then we're back up with these. I always want to make sure I keep all the greenery. There's another one. All the way up. And then I think we have one wispy. So this one might have to sit since we don't have two of everything. So we have two wispy pieces. We have two hydrangeas, which I think would look so good right in the center of those. So I'm just placing, okay, right in the center of those. Um, and going out. Of course, these are way too long. A little bit like that. Kind of coming down in here. There's one there. I think we have those wispies. We can put those in with the others so that we have something like this. Oops. It's so hard to get it to sit just so I can initially at least look and see. Do I like the way that looks? Kind of like that. I um, think I'm liking it. Aren't they pretty? So I am going to start gluing those in before I forget which is glued and which isn't. So I'm going to start on this side. I'm going to trim these down a bit more. We're just dipping, placing right down into the evergreen. So remember how I told you, you're not going to really see the evergreen. You're not really seeing the evergreen. So there's that. want to make sure we get all the leaves out so that when I take this and place this right in the center it's going to be so pretty especially once these start to drop like because these are part of that cascade part Make sure that one's on there nice and tight. That one doesn't want to seem to work. So now we're just going to take this, slide that into, and then this is perfect for the other side. Just like that, so those will keep Falling. I don't know if you guys can kind of see that, I'm trying to show it in the Mevo. So as it's cascading down into the mailbox. So I'm going to flip this back over. I'm going to go ahead and pull these apart. We're going to go ahead and glue in. These kind of look like daisies, peach colored daisies. One on each side. There we go. And then our hydrangea right in the center. And 
And if you need to, move your leaves, kind of reposition some of your floral around and down. And then don't worry, like I said, if it feels like things are kind of getting bunchy, it's arched. So we're building it flat. It's kind of hard to see it. Okay, there's that. And our little wispy piece. I'm just kind of bending this around. Okay, this is where we're at right now. I'm gonna take these, set those aside. I'm gonna grab the um, peachy colored binoculars and I'm gonna look at these because I wanna add some, start adding some yellow in here. So like in here. Push some of our stuff up. So then when I cut the stem down, it'll actually fit in here. Like that. So there's a little bit of our peach rhinoculus. These were from Greenery Market, and you can get them in every color imaginable. So I'm adding those where the other pieces kind of cascade down. And we're just going to commit. And go ahead and place those. I can't wait to see this. I almost wish I could take this outside with um, my glue pot out there so that if I needed to add additional florals, I can add additional florals as, um, you know, if I, as I'm putting this on, I'm like, oh, that would have been cute to have some more things in the back. And that is a critical point because you see everything on the sides. You don't necessarily see anything here on the back. The way that I fasten mine onto the mailbox is I take a lot of the evergreens that are here and I, it kind of sits in a little nook behind my mailbox so you can still see the address because um, the address is like right in the center. So I have to pull it away so it fits down in the center. And then I tie the backs of the evergreen um, together so that it doesn't fall off. Once it's in the little nook area, it won't move forward, but I also want to make sure it doesn't slide to the left or right. And let's see, am I okay there? I think so. I don't think I want to add anything else. So let's look at what else do we got? So we have some yellow. This is called scarp. This is Peach Avon, and then obviously this is Yellow Avon. These are from Michaels. So we're gonna add, here we are getting down into our detailed flowers. So like these little yellow Avons, I'm gonna put up here, pairing these right underneath my peach peonies. This will actually cascade into this little nook area. Pushing these up. We're going to do one to the other side. Okay. We're going to do that to the top. And then obviously we're going to put the peach where the, um, the yellow where the peach is, the peach where the yellow is. So I've learned a thing or two about putting my mailbox swag on 
because a lot of times I'll go, hmm, I need to pull that off, take that back into the shop and add some more right alongside in here. So again, as we're arching this, this is what you're building on. So this is what you're trying to envision. I'm trying to hold it flat, but this is the look that we're looking at. So as this flexes, we need to make sure that we're coming in here and covering. We're covering underneath here. Like right now we have moved our yellow down. So we're gonna add our peach up in here. So let's grab the peach. This time our peach is gonna go a little bit vertical. So we have one there, one below. It's filling the upper and lower gap. Okay, so as we break that, we're filling in this space. We'll come back in here and we'll add more here. But right now we have filled in here and here. We're gonna do it on the other side as well. So, a little on the upper side. And a little bit on the lower. Hubby won't even see it, but I will. He won't see it tonight, I'll see it in the morning. Okay. And this, believe it or not, you could build a mailbox swag so that if you wanted to, it could be a centerpiece on a table. You would just make your bow to where you would pull your tails, like half would be over here and the other half would be here and you would stretch this out long ways and then you would build on your swag to be a, a floral table runner or centerpiece like so. This would be nice on a Mother's Day or a spring, uh, what is it, uh, Easter dinner. I was like trying to think, what am I trying to say? Easter dinner. Now we're gonna Fill in that gap under the bow. Remember how I told you we've got this? So I'm going to take some of that yellow and we're adding that in. Keep this on the other side, right in here. Almost everywhere where you see your evergreen, you're going to need to place something. I mean, you could leave your evergreen if you wanted to see it. Okay. There we go. All right. That one's done. Um, now we're going to add in some peach colored puppies. These are from Michael's. I need the ones with the leaves on them, obviously. And we're gonna add these ones towards the bottom. We went with peonies at the top. And the peonies, um, by the way, I got from Amazon. The Rinoculus, like I said, from Greenery Market. Um, that one big pick with the daisies and our little wispy trailing daisies, that was from Hobby Lobby. And these are from Michael's. So we're adding these going down to the bottom. So I have one there. There's one here. Let's add a grand total of four of them. Two on each side. So those are there. Add these down. 
go back over here. And I want the one with the leaves. And I think when I bought these at Michael's, these were when their florals were 50% off. So when I bought them, they were $2. But look how pretty that is. I'm just staying in the peach. Um, it's like a peach, a yellow, a light green um, color palette. And these we get to manipulate once we're actually out there. Um, let's take a couple of these and add these down to the very bottom. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom with these right down there. These again are Michael's when they're 50% off. They are only $2, but I'm sure they've gone up, so they're probably like $4 now, but it's still a really good deal. And since I only have two left, I may as well just put them in here. I'm gonna do the same thing. One on each side. Just like that. I pray the deer do not eat these. You could bring a tube of super glue outside if you wanted and add more. Yeah. Or, yeah, you're right. Um, Anna said you could bring out some zip ties and zip tie those in. Yes, you could definitely do that. Okay. There's that. My whole goal is to get rid of the evergreen color. So, so far I think we're doing okay. Um, now we're going to add in, where are they? I have just one bunch, but they are these tulips. I don't know if Michael's had this color this year, but they are a um, peach, pink, and yellow combination. So again, I'm going to take and place these right in here with my poppies. And put one on the opposite side. Same place. You can honestly just start backfilling with whatever colors you want. So I'm trying to go obviously big, um, medium, then we start to get into the small little details and um, we'll add in a couple more sprigs of the uh, tulips. I'll bring these up. Like I might. Do we want to do that? I think I do. I want to bring this up next to the peony. There we go. And just kind of have a little bit of something different. Here's another one. Let's see, we did that one to the back. So we'll do to the back and then we'll also do to the front. So all I'm doing is just pushing up my greenery and snipping it off, dipping it in my skillet, kind of finding a home and just kind of placing that inside so that it's all super pretty. Okay, let's put the last one on for our tulips. Again, right where that breaks. Right inside. I'm actually gonna take a couple more 
you know, I'm gonna tuck them in behind my bow so that as that bow sits on the mailbox swag, I can have the two lips kind of cascading out the back for the people that are like me walking up to the mailbox swag from the back. And then I can see a nice little spray of um, tulips. And I'm trying to find ones that are pretty furry. Even so, what do you guys think so far? That's been kind of quiet. Um, so I'm just adding little tulip pieces because um, I like the blend of all the colors I've used so far. I've been adding them to the spray where the green is. That really long green piece right in here. Just adding some tulips. So that, let's see. Let's break this and see how this is falling. Okay, so remember our bow is going to be wide open here. I definitely want to add something in here. I'm looking at how it's falling. So far, I'm pretty happy, except, like I said, right here, right in here, this little area where it breaks. So, I don't... Let's see, what if we add in Let me look at this. That is a little too long. I'm gonna look at adding a rose up in here right at the break. Right there. Because that's right where this breaks from that. So we're trying to fill in here. See, when it lays this way, can't fill it. When it lays this way, we can fill it. And then we'll come in with a darker peach rose on the other side. So I'm gonna do one there. So when they break, we have roses. Roses are from Michael's. So again, where they break, we have a nice division. We'll add some tulips in there. So we're gonna do the same on the other side. So don't be afraid to pick it up and move it. and look at, hey, um, you know, I'm starting to see an issue. And right now it seems like the bow is just getting scrunched. It's because we're building everything in from moving. And then once this is up, this actually lays more forward facing. And then we have our nice look there. So let's add our two peach roses. on the other side. There's one. And okay, we are, this is right where our break is. It's right under here. We don't see that because the ribbons are there. 
until we fold it. Just like so, bend them down and take a look. If there's anything you want to add, add it before you take it out and place it. I'm trying to see what I saw. Oh, it's right here underneath my peony on the back side. And I'm gonna add something in here. inside there it looks so it's hard because you're building it to not lay flat but to lay three-dimensional and so the building is a little bit different so just remember that constantly open it bend it look at how everything is kind of just falling in place and then I think I just might add a couple pieces of baby's breath to that. Let me look and see. Let me snip one off. Oh, yeah. This is so pretty. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these apart because I liked doing it my way. Some of them are a little too, a little too full. So I just whip that off really quick, but adding these again, bend it. That just really changes that. Bend it over here, opposite side. Just like that. We're going to add a couple pieces of that since I really like it. Um, this baby breath, baby's breath is from a Greenery Market. So as you see, I'm subdividing my pieces and just giving some more dimension, some more movement. We'll add this one to the very, very, very bottom. Just like that. Take another piece off. I don't know how many of you actually look at investing in um, looking for my better cutters. I should know better. I think I put them in the other box. Um, you really should invest more in um, these are so much nicer um, in greenery because our greenery is going to make everything for us. Where did I put that one? Uh, just under the peony. Nope. Looking again. Just under the ranoculus. Right here. Break. And then one at the very bottom. like so. Look how pretty that is. It's looking so full. It's full of florals is what it is. Oh. I'm going to split another one and add this. We added one to the bottom, one to the center. I'm going to add one to the top right here at that break. Right 
right there. So that when we have this break, we can get this. Thanks. Let's pull this out. Let's cut it down a little bit. It feels like it's a little too long. Right at this break. That's got a nice little deviation there. And of course now it's, it's getting to the point where it doesn't want to lie flat anymore because we've added to it. So we can get it to kind of lay flat so that you can kind of see the different heights and different textures and different everything on here. And I'm just coming in, adding little pieces that um, are off of that one pick, just so you have a bunch of different items. So I'm curious to see how this will hold up. I'm confident it'll hold up really well because I've seen other stuff that I would have thought, eh, it's going to all fall apart, but it's okay. It just gives us an excuse to pull it all apart and make another one. So um, what do y'all think? I know it's hard to see everything in its entirety, but that is it. I am dying to put this on my mailbox and um, I'll show you what the other one looks like, but this is the way that it, it is. It is. So there's one side. Here's our bow that's going to sit on top of the mailbox and the other side that'll drape down to the bottom. So I think we have successfully covered our evergreen. What questions do you guys have? These are quite popular um, and you can make them very basic. You can make them just with deco mesh and do a whole bunch of different deco mesh curls. You know, you can throw a couple Easter bunnies in it. You can throw a couple eggs in it. You could do something like this to where it's spring and then just pop in. I don't have any, put them all away. Um, little, Those will not wear well. All the glitter will eventually wash off for them. But there is our beautiful um, spring floral mailbox swag. So I hope you guys will come back. Thanks, Gail. Um, good back on um, Thursday morning. We're going to make a lantern swag to match this so that the mailbox swag is way out on the Front of the house way far away um but we need to make one that'll like tie in the um what should i call it it'll tie in the lantern swag to a wreath we'll end up having to do a wreath something similar to this with the same colors so that we can kind of keep that theme going but at least it'll get me all the way to memorial day right before i have to change anything up and I will keep posting pictures and let you know how well it does. And I don't spray them with anything. I could come in and spray it with a UV protectant, but I'm like, you know what? I'm really trying to be like every customer is, um, oh, let me see, um, who probably isn't going to UV spray it. And if UV spray it, you have to UV spray it every six weeks to make that last. Um, Eileen asked a good question. How do you connect it to the mailbox? Um, it depends on how your mailbox is built. Mine has a post and then it has a slot and then it has a piece of wood that goes here. Let me, let me fan, let me pan you up. Sorry. So you guys don't have to keep looking down. Um, my mailbox has got a post and then it's got a stick, right? And then my mailbox is here. It sits on that, the post but then there's a gap behind it. And so my mailbox swag sits um, in between that gap in my mailbox and the post. 
And then I just take the evergreen pieces and I just twist them all the way to the back, all the way along the post because then it keeps the swag laying flat and it fills in the back along the post so you don't see nothing. So I will take pictures of it and show you what it looks like once I get it out there. Any other questions you guys have? Don't forget, private group is back open. Um, right now you get the Business Academy and the Design Academy for one low price. That's gonna be changing soon. So make sure you sign up because once they split and they become their own separate entities, um, those of you that are on the dual package, you'll have access to both. So um, I don't know how long we're gonna do that for just yet, but we are looking at making changes so that people who wanna be business or business, people who wanna do designer on design, people who want both get both. So um, couchcreationsandmore.com for those of you that wanna sign up. Um, that should be about it. I think I've covered all the materials and where they all came from. So I will see you guys Thursday morning at 10 Pacific, which is 12 noon central and 1 p.m. No, sorry, 11. That's right, 11 Pacific, which is 1 central, 2 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday. And we're gonna make a matching um, lantern swag for this. All right, everyone, have a great night and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.